meaning you can you can actually sit for the exam 180 days or six months before graduation, as long as you meet these requirements here by the end of the six months. So for example, if you guys graduate in May, you can actually sign up to sit for the exam as early as December um, of your senior year. And then as long as you have your bachelor's degree in 24 units of accounting, 24 units of business, by the end of your senior year, you can basically get a head start on taking the CPA exam, which is actually a huge deal because then you can actually get the exam done quicker and faster. So um, that is a huge advantage because a lot of other states, you cannot take the exam until you have your bachelor's degree. So I would definitely encourage everyone to capitalize on taking this exam as early as you can. And then, like I said, there's going to be different requirements to get licensed as a CPA. So that's when you need the 150 total semester units, including 20 in accounting study and 10 in ethics study. So again, there is a difference between taking the exam and then getting licensed with the 150. Plus, you also need one year of work experience to get your license. So um, you can be working in public accounting, private government, advisory tax consulting, whatever it is, as long as your experience is signed off by an active CPA. So basically, your manager or supervisor has to have an active CPA license in order to validate your one year. And if you're working part-time, um, 2,000 hours, is fine. And if you're working full time, it just has to be 12 months. And that doesn't even have to be consecutive. So you could work three months internship here at a firm, three months internship at another firm. So you can work for different companies um, at different time periods. You also have an unlimited time to get your experience, either before or after passing your exams, or even while you are studying for your exams, you can be getting your experience. So very flexible there. Why become a CPA? Well, you could actually earn 15% more in total compensation than your non-certified peers. And that can add up to over a million dollars during the course of your career. So it definitely pays financially to become a CPA. And here um, are some common career paths you can get into once you have your license under your belt, such as controller, finance director, VP, et cetera. So let's get to the exam itself. So there are four sections to the CPA. First, we have auditing. These are the main topics covered in your auditing class or textbook. Then we have BEC. This is your general business section. So these are courses you may have taken with non-accounting majors, such as econ, finance, information systems, et cetera. And then we have FAR. So that covers everything in your intermediate accounting series, as well as advanced and government and not-for-profit. And then lastly, we have REG. That is everything tax-related. So federal tax, business law, and ethics. We call each of these sections by their acronyms. It's gonna be audit, BC, FAR, and REG. Now here's a breakdown of each of the sections. About half the exam will be comprised of multiple choice questions. The other half will be comprised of task-based simulations. And those simulations are like mini case studies that you're gonna to have to do. So they're gonna be a lot longer and more involved. And I'll show you an example of both of those right after this. But the multiple choice in the simulations will come in the form of what we call testlets. And those are sections themselves. So there's gonna be two multiple choice testlets and three simulation testlets for a total of five. Now, BEC is a little different because it also includes three written communication tasks. And those are gonna be like mini business writing essays you have to complete. And if you see down here, the writing component actually replaces one of the simulations for BEC, but they still have a total of five testlets all around. And each section is going to be four hours long. But have no fear because you do not have to take all the sections all at once. You can take them one at a time and in any order that you'd like. The exam is uniform. So whether you take it in California or any other state, it's going to be the same standard exam. It's all computerized and randomly generated. Does anyone know what a perfect score is on the CPA? You can just type it in the chat. Anyone's brave enough to guess? <laughs> no wrong answers here. Yes, Ashley, it is a 75 because that's all you need to pass. So that is a perfect score in my mind. I actually got a 75 on one of the sections and I was like, yes, I studied just the right amount. Not too much, not too little. So um, that is the score that you are aiming for. Now, keep in mind that not all the questions count because the examiners are going to slip in these questions that are called pre-test. 
and they're trying to determine, are these questions too easy or are they too hard? They're going to test them out on you first and then throw them out. So if you run into a really weird question on the exam, it's most likely a pre-test question and try not to dwell on it too much. This is also an adaptive exam, meaning if you do well on the first multiple choice testlet, you will encounter a more difficult second multiple choice testlet. And those harder questions are worth more points. So it's easier to get a higher score on the exam with the harder questions. So if you feel like the exam is gradually getting harder, that's actually a good sign because that means you're doing really well. So kind of like cruel and unusual punishment. So here is a sample multiple choice question. This is a mirror image of the actual CPA exam. So Wiley gives you this testing environment so you know exactly what to expect on the big day. As you can see, you have your countdown function here, electronic calculator. Any Excel gurus rejoice because you can do any formula your heart desires on the exam. You can also flag the questions here and go back and forth between them. See how there are five testlets above here? Once you submit a testlet, you cannot go back to a previous one. So try not to leave any of the questions blank. Here is a sample task-based simulation. As you can see, it's gonna be a lot more um, time consuming because they might have you open up some exhibits on the side, review the documents, and then you're gonna have to fill in the blanks. So um, just make sure to leave enough time at the end of the exam for the simulations. And a lot of students ask in which order should I take the sections in? This is my recommendation is to start with the hardest section, which is FAR, because it's the most comprehensive and it's also most relevant to the classes that you're taking now in school. So get that one out of the way first. Then you're gonna proceed on to either audit or reg. You'll find that your work experience in public accounting, working either audit or tax will help you with those two sections. And then lastly, I would tackle BEC. You'll find that accumulative knowledge of the other three sections will help you when you take BEC last because of those essays that you need to write there. So set your priorities and follow what I call the big rock theory, as in tackle the harder sections first and then finish off with the smaller ones. Keep in mind that you have a rolling 18 month timeline to pass all four sections. And this timeline doesn't start until the day that you pass your first section. So let's say you pass FAR on January 1st, then you'd have until July 1st of the next year to pass the remaining sections. Otherwise they start expiring on you. And it's really hard to get back on track once that starts happening. So um, just be mindful of time management. And let's just say, heaven forbid, FAR does drop off then your new 18 months would start whenever you pass the second one. So in this case, it would be audit on February 1st. So um, that's the countdown just to be cognizant of. Now here's the application and examination process. So you're gonna apply for the exam at nasba.org and submit payment. All four sections in the application fee will be around 900 to $1,000, but a lot of your firms will pay for that or at least reimburse you. Then you're gonna receive your notices schedule or NTS. Now, that is your green light to go ahead and schedule your exam. Now, um, in California, that NTS is only good for nine months. So instead of having to pay for upfront and sign up for all four sections within nine months, my recommendation is to break it up with two notices schedules. So sign up with two sections with one NTS and the other two sections with the other NTS. That way you don't feel pressured to have to take the whole entire exam within nine months and you kind of spread it out and take your time. Then you're gonna repeat all of this until you pass all the sections, yippee. Then at the end of all of this, they're gonna ask you to take an ethics exam, um, but that's take home. So it's obviously not as bad as the actual exam because you can take it from the comfort of your home. Alrighty, now here's the Prometric Testing Center. This is where you're physically going to go to take the exam. Now, just be prepared for TSA on steroids because they're going to ask you to empty your pockets, wand you down with a metal detector. Um, you're going to you have to give your ID, get fingerprinted, and you cannot bring in anything into the testing center. Um, they'll give you a locker. Um, and then they'll also give you a 15 minute restroom break halfway through the exam um, if you need to just get a mental break from the exam halfway through. Okay, any questions about what we just talked about before we talk, go on to the CPA evolution? Isaac, are you talking? I'm not sure. Yeah, you're on mute. 
Oh, no, sorry, I was just repeating what the slide was saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so the exam is changing on January 1st, 2024. So um, what's happening? Well, basically they're changing the whole structure and they're just trying to add a lot more technology, data analytics, and stuff that's more relevant to the accounting profession today. So everyone um, starting in 2024 is going to have to take this core function, which includes accounting, auditing, and tax. Then there's an optional, you have to choose a discipline, an option of either tax compliance and planning or business analysis and reporting or information systems and control. So you are required to take, again, the three core sections here, and you can choose one of these outside disciplines. Now, um, because change is scary and it looks like the exam is actually gonna be getting harder, my recommendation is to actually take this exam entirely before the change. So get it all done by December, 2023. Um, and I know for some of you guys that is not possible, but if it is, I would strongly recommend doing that just because um, it, the exam will be getting harder and um, you know change is scary. So if you can um, work that out with your schedule to get it done, definitely do that. And you can use Wiley's exam planner to make sure you're on track and just time it out accordingly. But for those younger students who cannot take it before the change in December um, 2023, then this is the transition policy. So a lot of students ask, well, what happens? Well, if you see these corresponding sections from the old test, if you have not taken any of these sections, then you would just take these sections that are corresponding with the new exam. So for example, the auditing pretty much translates into the new auditing. FAR translates into the new um, financial accounting and reporting. Reg translates into the new tax, but BEC. Now, if you have not taken BEC before the change, then you are allowed to take either one of the disciplines here. And from my understanding, these disciplines are going to be harder than the core. So if you had to only choose one section to take before the big change, I would take BEC and get that one done because from my understanding, it's actually gonna get harder um, here. So um, this is not to scare anyone or alarm you, but um, please, if you are a junior or senior, get a head start on the exam, get it done, and you will thank yourselves later. Any questions on the evolution before we move on to study strategies? Okay. I have a question. Yes, Isaac. As a junior, that's I graduated spring 20, 2023. So if that's the case, I should focus on BEC, right? To get that out of the way. Yep. And I would also take advantage of applying for the exam your senior year, mm -hmm. um, the end of your senior year, and start taking it then too, because you're going to need, well, hopefully you want to finish all four sections before January 1st, 2024. Right. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm glad I'm giving you guys all a heads up now because then you can start planning, right? Exactly. <laughs> all right. Cool. Okay. So here's our suggested study time. Because FAR is such a beast, I recommend 200 hours of studying. Reg is probably the second media section. I recommend 120 hours. And then audit and BEC are a little bit slimmer. I recommend 100 hours each for those. So you guys have a lot to look forward to. Okay, now on exam day, they're gonna give you this welcome screen for five minutes and you're supposed to enter the launch code and read the confidentiality agreement. But you should actually familiarize yourself with this process at the AICPA website. Therefore, you can kind of like bypass this. And in those five minutes, you can do what I call a brain dump. So basically, all the formulas and really important tidbits and notes that you've memorized for this exam, get it all out on your scratch paper before the test even begins. And you'll be surprised at how much you can actually get down on your paper in five minutes. And just practice this with your practice exams, of course. Um, 
And that way, when you're actually going through the exam and racing against the clock, you don't have to spend any valuable time writing down the formulas because it's already, already on your paper before the test began. So I thought the brain dump was a really good strategy um, that I used throughout the exam process. So a lot of this is common sense, but it's just good to go over. Uh, so it's so easy to get sucked into the social media black hole of TikTok and Snapchat, am I right? So if you want to just throw your phone in the other room or just turn it off altogether, that way you're not sucked into the social media black hole and constantly tempted to look at your notifications, you can have a very high quality study session. Anyone who purchases the Wiley program will get free access to our app. So if you are working full time and also studying, um, you're going to try to use every waking moment to study for this exam. So I would be driving to work, listening to video lectures, or I would be in line at the grocery store going over flashcards. So the app is a very good way to tack on an additional, you know, five hours a week and then tape it to the mirror. So like I said, there's a lot of formulas that you need to memorize, especially for FAR. So I would take some scratch piece of paper, write it in big lettering and tape it to your mirror. That way, when you are brushing your hair or teeth, you can actually utilize that otherwise idle time to study those formulas. So kind of double dipping on your time. And then prepare a CPA Bible. So with all your notes and tidbits and everything um, that you studied over the months, Put it all in a study packet, and that way it makes your 11th hour final review that much easier. And then find a time of day that works for you. General tips and advice. So repetition is key here. You're going to want to drill through as many questions as possible. The great thing is that Wiley gets together with the AICPA every year, and we get the recycled questions. So the more that you go through and practice, the more likely it is you're going to see the exact question verbatim on the exam with just different numbers. And then read the questions carefully, because especially in the audit section, they're going to slip in these words such as not or accept, and that changes the entire dynamic of the question. So just make sure you're not skimming anything. And if you want to go through the testlets, flag the hard ones, go through the easy ones first and come back to the hard ones, that is totally acceptable and actually a very good strategy. Also, studying for long periods of time can be very isolating, um, as we all know from COVID, that, um, you know, try to find a study buddy or accountability partner to make studying a more enjoyable experience, if you can even call it that. But that way you're not just on an island and <laughs> just by yourself trying to figure everything out. You can actually motivate each other, teach the material and kind of make this whole process more fun. And be familiar with the Prometric Testing Center. So, um, you know, have driving and directions and um, parking down pat because you don't want any unnecessary stress on exam day. Get it out of the way. So I think I've already emphasized this enough, but um, I can just tell you that my biggest regret on my CPA exam journey was that I didn't get more sections done before I started working full time. So, um, you know, I graduated in June. I was like, YOLO, I just want to have fun. No more studying. And then I found out that I was working 80 hours a week at PwC and had literally no time for myself, get alone studying. So um, if you can get at least two to three sections done before you start working, you will thank yourselves later. And just trust me from going through the process, you're going to want to get it done. And then don't psych yourself out. Some general wellness tips, work hard, play hard. So if you pass a section, go on a little shopping spree or go on a mini vacay, give yourselves mini milestone rewards along the way because it can be you know, very daunting to go through this uphill challenge of the CPA. And then remind yourself why you wanna become a CPA. For some people, it's that $5,000 bonus they get from their firm for passing, yippee, or it's because they want to eventually become a partner at their firm one day. So just, you know, remind yourself why you are doing this and then lean on your support system. So a lot of your friends and family, they might tempt you to always hang out or do stuff, but you just need to remind them, hey, look, I just need to put my head down, get this done. And it's only less than a year of my life, right? <laughs> and then um, be optimistic, just keep swimming. Honestly, the CPA is just a test of discipline, not a test of intelligence. So anyone can pass this exam if they put their time and effort into it. So you really only give 
or you really only fail the exam if you give up. So I know it can be a dark time in your life, uh, but just trust me when I say that passing the CPA exam will pay exponential dividends for your career and future. So just stick with it. All right, so I'll get off my soapbox and this is the journey to the CPA. You're gonna fulfill your education requirements, apply for the exam, schedule, study, take the day dang thing and you are on your way to the CPA. So here's my contact information. If you have any CPA exam related questions, I'm happy to be a resource for you. Or if you just wanna say hi or ask about the big four or recruiting or anything, um, I'm here to help. So uh, do you guys have any questions? Yes. Uh, Shame, Gemma. Yes, uh, I had a quick question regarding um, earlier you mentioned that once you pass all four exams, there's unlimited time to get work experience. I just wanted to double confirm if that's true. Mm -hmm. So let's say you, so once you pass all four sections within the 18 months, you never have to worry about them expiring because they will not. Um, let's say you want to wait a year, five years, 10 years to get that one year work experience, although I don't know why you would wait, but you could absolutely do that because those, once you pass all four sections within the 18 months, they never expire. Thank you. Good question. Anyone else? Yeah, I have a question about just getting your notice to schedule and um, actually like all the application and everything. I heard it takes a while. Do you know how long it's gonna take? And if we, I should start now, I'm a senior, so I don't oh, know. Okay, much. yeah, so. It's the end of your senior year. I would start now because yes, it can take them two to three months to get you your notice to schedule. It's a government organization. They move like dinosaurs. So um, I would uh, definitely apply as soon as you can. Just show that you have proof of um, your official transcript and that's showing your bachelor's degree and then 24 units each of accounting and business um, by the end of your senior year. And you could, once you get approved, you can start sitting and studying for the exam. Got it. Um, since I'm still in school, I can, I, I have all the units and stuff, but if they ask for like proof of my bachelor's degree, um, can I just- Yeah, that will, waiting? since they know that you're applying early, you would just let them know. And then you once you get your bachelor's degree on your official transcript, once you graduate in the spring, um, that's when you would submit that. Okay, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Definitely take advantage of that exception that they just created in January because um, I didn't have that when I was in school and that would have been really key because um, I had applied for the exam like when I graduated in June and then I didn't get approved to take it until like August or September. Yeah, August and I didn't take it till September. So Basically, I wasted the whole summer, right? So if you guys can get a head start on that now, you can start, you can knock out at least two to three sections this summer. Okay, good question. Anyone else? I have a question. Yes. My question, sorry. My question would be that I graduate December, 2023. So I'm like right at that spot where like um, it's gonna change. Do you think that I can apply like six months before and get some sections done before yes. that? Yes, exactly. So if you graduate December, so going backwards, so you could actually start applying as early as July, right? As long as you show proof by December 2023 that you have your official transcript and the 24 units of accounting and business. And then I would, if I only had to choose one section to take my last year of senior year, I would take BEC because that one's gonna get harder. Um, and then if I could choose two sections, it would be BEC and FAR. So try to get those two done your senior year if you can. Thank you. I had another question. Mm -hmm. um, so in 2024, since it's going to change about the last section, how will Wiley um, like help us practice for the divided sections? Yes. So we actually update our content uh, every six months through the cloud. So you, once you purchase our program, you never have to pay for any updates or software content upgrades because um, it's all given through your program. And um, we are starting to prepare for the CPA evolution um, as of right now. So 
all that content will be updated by next year in 2023. Wow. Time is flying. I can't believe it's still like, it's March of 2022. I'm like, what year are we in? Okay. Um, it's all a blur since COVID. So yeah, 2023 is when we'll be dropping all the new content and for the evolution. And did that answer your question? Sorry, Gemma. Yes, no, thank you so much. I was just thinking, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just dreading over it. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, sorry, Isaac. Oh, yeah. Uh, so follow up to that one. So does that mean why they will help you choose what uh, part of BC best suits you? Maybe the IS section or the business yeah. analysis or tax one? Well, it won't be like a assessments like, oh, you should take this one. But we'll probably give you a rundown of like each of the disciplines. And then based on that information, you would decide. Thank you. You're welcome. And let me actually give you guys a 50% discount on our review course. Um, and once you purchase our review course, um, you actually get lifetime access. So we never expire until you are done with your CPA. So if you wanted to take advantage of the 50% now, um, you could definitely do that. So um, let me put this in the chat. So not only do we do test prep for CPA, but you, as you can see, we do CMA, CIA, we do PMP, GMAT, a bunch of finance such as CFP, CFA, but if we go into your accounting, you go to CPA. So normally our program is $2,500, uh, but I'm actually giving it half price for everyone up until April 30th. So you guys have like a little over a month to take advantage of this um, for $12.99. So that's a really good deal. And then also under business skills, if you go to MS Excel for accountants, I'm giving away a free excels basics course which is self-study and online so it's normally 150 dollars, but i'm actually giving this away for free so if you'd like to take advantage um, and brush up on your excel skills which i do highly recommend um, before going into public accounting i definitely would uh, take advantage of that too any questions any other questions yes um what was your what was your um cpa exam journey like uh what was your experience with like every single test general thoughts of uh, each of the sections yes so far was really difficult um for me just because the content is so much. Basically, it's all of your intermediate accounting series and advanced accounting. So it's just a lot of content, right? And it's just like a lot of stuff to pack into your brain. Um, so I would try to take that one first, just because it kind of lays the foundation for everything else. And then um, reg was really challenging for me too, because I had never taken a tax class at UC Santa Barbara. It was not required there. Um, so thankfully I actually had Wiley's program to go over everything I needed to know about tax <laughs> and I was able to pass, but, um, so that just goes to show, like, if you don't even take a tax class, you're not even exposed to tax. Like our program will give you everything you need to know to prepare for the course, to pre prepare for the exam. So we're basically like your class in this program. So um, that was really challenging. And then audit was very easy for me uh, because I was an auditor at PwC. So I was living and breathing that work. And so I think I got like a 91 on that just because it was just easier for me because I was doing it on a daily basis. And then BEC, um, that one was lighter as well um, because there weren't as many like formulas and stuff you needed to calculate. That was more... Um, just like conceptual and the writing component was okay. So that was my recommendation um, is to do FAR, REG, and then either audit or BC. 
ending that. I would probably end with BEC. But if you are trying to decide before the CPA evolution, if you're in that boat, I would try to do BEC first because that one's going to get harder. When you were yeah. talking about the scores, do the firms ever ask you like what points? Well, <laughs> no. no. Okay. <laughs> so um, if you get over 75, you pretty much overstudied. <laughs> um, so literally no one cares what you get as long as you pass. No one's like, oh my God, I got like a 91 on this test. Like literally no one cares um, as long as you pass it. Okay. <laughs> You're good to go. Maybe you'll get bragging rights amongst your peers, but that's pretty much it. Thank so you. <laughs> don't go so overboard to try to get like a hundred percent because you're going to get the same credit as someone who got a 75. Yeah. I was worried, like maybe the firms will get notified what score you get. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> no, no, no. That's definitely not true. And, um, but try not to be on too much of the cusp, right. Of 75. Cause a lot of people will get like 71, 74 is like heartbreaking because you have to do it all over again because you're one point away. So try not to be too much on the cusp, but try not to be way overboard. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? All righty. Well, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. I'm going to put my contact information in here again, if you have questions and, um, Thank you. And hopefully I'll see you guys on campus in the fall. Yeah, actually, before everyone leaves, can we take a quick screenshot just for our yes. marketing team? Yep. Yes. So if everyone can turn on their cameras or those who are comfortable doing so. Cool. I'll be doing a countdown. So let's see. Three, two, one. Awesome. That's so, cute. You guys do that. <laughs> I think you guys are the only school that does that. That's so cute. Oh, the screenshots? Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Have a good day. All right. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. I meant to put the waving emoji, but I put the clapping hand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good job, guys. See you at the barbecue. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Peace. Bye. Bye. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> I like watching people leave. Mm.